Hi guys, in this session we're going to be looking at uh, rearranging formula. So just to get started with this, uh, just a, a bit of a recap from priority of operations um, that I would have done earlier in the series. Um, I'm talking about bed mass here, all right? So that's where you had uh, you had your brackets, uh, you had your exponents or powers, you had division, you had multiplication, addition, and subtracting and subtraction. Uh, this is just something that's useful to remember for rearranging, because with rearranging equations, we uh, we're trying to work backwards almost. Um, and the best way to do this is always by showing you guys some examples. All right, so here's my first example. So if I have this equation, y equals to mx plus c, make x the subject. So what do they mean by when they say when make the x the subject is they want you to write this equation y equals mx plus c so that x is by itself and everything else is on the right hand side or the left hand side. It really doesn't matter because remember if it's equals it can be on either side. Um, yeah so that's the first thing. Now in terms of rearranging this I'm actually going to show you guys um, a couple of ways of doing this. All right, so the first method is looking at it as y equals mx plus c. Now, if I want to rearrange things, obviously the thing, uh, the two letters I need to get rid of so that x is by itself is I need to get rid of m and I need to get rid of c. Now, I mean, the way I was taught, the way I've seen people do, and then the way I teach, it's like so many different ways you can do it in. I'm going to show you guys the first method. Now, in this method, you kind of have a look at this equation and you see mx plus c. All right, so the first letter I want to get rid of is c. You might ask, why is it that I want to get rid of c first? Now, I want to go back to the priority of operations. All right, if you have a look at x, all right, the first thing that's been happened to it is it's being multiplied by m. And then the second thing that's happening is c is being added on to it. So I almost want to go backwards. And when I say backwards, I'm looking at this and going, okay, so m is the first thing that was affected with x, then it was c. So I need the first thing I need to get rid of is c itself. So if I was to rearrange this, I would have y equals to mx. Now, because this is plus c, and remember, I'm going to show you a few methods, plus c. If I take plus c to the other side of the equation, then it becomes the opposite of whatever plus is. So opposite of plus is minus, opposite of multiplication is division. So if it's plus C here on the left-hand side, oh, sorry, right-hand side, if it shifts to the left-hand side, it becomes minus C. All right, so all I have is Y minus C equals MX. Now, M is being multiplied by X, which means if I wanna have X by itself, I want to shift the M to the right hand side. Now, as I said, told you guys, M is being multiplied. So the opposite function of multiplication is division. So then you have Y minus C and that whole thing divided by M equals X. So there's my first rearrangement. So X is equal to Y minus C over M. Now, I'm going to show you guys another method of doing this. This method, I've got Y equals MX plus C. Um, as usual, I'm going to go back to my order of operations and see that M is the first one, C is the second one. So I need to get rid of C. So this is, I think, balancing equations. And for balancing equations, so I have to take away C from the right-hand side, which means I also have to take away C on the left-hand side. All right. What that means is on the left-hand side now, I have Y minus C equals mx. Now c minus c is zero, so I just leave it as it is. And then the next step is if I want to get rid of the m, I need to divide both sides by m. And what tends to happen is m divided by m equals to one. And so I have y minus c over m equals x. And that's the other way of doing it. And as you can see, both of these answers are the same. Right, I'm going to do some quick fire questions, guys. So it's a whole lot of rearranging that's going to happen in the next couple of minutes. 
So bear with me on this one. Okay, so the next example is we've got a equals pi r squared, make r the subject. So I'm going to write it up as it is. a is equal to pi r squared. Uh, I need to get rid of when I shift pi to, should I do it both ways? Yeah, let's do it both ways. All right, if I was to do a equals pi r squared, shifting to the pi to the uh, right hand side, I'm going to have a divided by pi equals r squared. And of course, if you remember to find a square root of, um, if r squared equals a number, to find r, you need to take square root of the other number. So r would then equal a divided by pi. Now, if I was to do this the other way, which is a equals pi r squared, which means I need to divide both sides by pi, which will, which means the pi's get canceled out on the right hand side. And I have a over pi equals r squared. And of course the same step, r is equal to a over pi. Now guys, in maths, it's really important. Well, I think it's, we just like to be picky with certain things. When someone is asking you to make the subject of something, uh, you really should be writing r on the left hand side because these two things are equal. You can literally just, you don't need to worry about changing signs or anything. You literally just switch everything as it is. So r equals a over pi. Because remember, if I was to do this in numbers, if I do three plus two equals five, I can also write it as five equals to three plus two. Same kind of idea here. All right, next example. So I've got x equals y plus two over six and I need to make y the subject. Okay, so in this case, x equals y plus two over six. So when I shift uh, the six to the right hand side, because it's being divided on, oh, sorry, on the left hand side, because six is being divided on the right hand side, when it goes to the left hand side, it will become multiplied. So we then have six x equals y plus two, and now, because the two is being shifted over here, we're gonna get six X minus two because it's the opposite sign of plus two. So then Y equals to six X minus two. Okay, one more example and that'll be the last one. So similar kind of ideas, Z equals X minus M over five. So if I was to do this, I have z equals x minus, let's get rid of that, x minus m over five. And what you'll notice is because five is being divided, when it brings to the other side, it becomes multiplied. So we have five z equals x minus m. And rearranging x, because when x comes to this side, remember when x, if it doesn't have a symbol in front of it, we assume, well, we know that it's positive. So when it actually shifts to the other side, it actually becomes minus z equals negative m. Now it's really important that you read the question because the question is actually asking you to make m the subject and not negative m. All right, so there's two things you can do here. Uh, one, what you could do is you could literally change the sign of everything. So for example, you could actually say, okay, if negative M equals this, then positive M is gonna equal negative five Z and plus Z. That's one way of doing it really quickly. Or the second way would be, you could do something like this. You could have done, well, bring all the terms. So switch the terms around. So if I bring negative M to this side, it will become positive M. So then we would have, oh, sorry, then we'd have five Z minus Z equals M, not equals M, sorry, plus M equals zero. And because we want M by itself, we now need to move five Z and negative Z. And five Z, when it comes to the other side, it's minus five Z. And when minus Z comes to the other side, it's positive Z. And as you can see, both of these answers are once again the same thing. And that's basically it guys for rearranging um, the formula, um, making the subject as well. 
So yeah, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to pop in the comments. Thank you for watching.